Is the Quadro P2000 worth it in a higher-end Plex Media server? Or is it worth it to spend the extra money on a more capable CPU like the Ryzen 3700X? Well, to save you all some time, I'll just give you a short, simple answer. If you haven't already noticed, I started taking my channel branding to another level. Using my bitmybits.tech domain name, you can either go directly to my YouTube channel or use customized product links in the descriptions of my videos. I know, I'm so fancy. But since I identify as a tech addict, it only makes sense to use my .tech domain name to its fullest potential. And if you want to, you can too. Whether you want to launch a business or just start a blog, a .tech domain name is the easiest way to get the name you want with the branding you deserve. So if you're a programmer, a developer, or just a tech enthusiast watching this, visit go.tech slash BMB or use the link in the description to get your own .tech domain today. And don't forget to use the coupon code BMB for 90% off your one or five year registration. Plex Hardware Acceleration has, for a long time, brought massive performance boosts to media servers all over the world. In today's video, I am pairing up the P2000 with the brand new Ryzen 3700X processor. And doing so actually brought up a really good question. And that is, if you're building a brand new dedicated Plex Media server, is it worth it to spend the extra money on a P2000? Or is it better just to spend that extra money on a higher end CPU, like the 3700X? Well, after a week of testing, tweaking, and confusing and geese for ducks, I finally have some numbers that might help answer this question. In fact, as an added bonus, because I know there's gonna be plenty of people out there that wonder this information, I added in some performance numbers from the 3900X. Yes, my credit card is on fire. Thank you for asking. And also, thank you for Dot Tech Domains sponsoring this video. That helped. Before I give you these performance numbers, let me dive into my testing platform so you have a better idea on how to reproduce my results. To start off, of course, we have the two new processors, the Ryzen 3700X and the Ryzen 3900X. Those are being paired up with the PNY Quadro P2000 graphics card. Then I got the craziest motherboard I can find, the godlike X570 Meg board from MSI. Just a little side note here, you don't actually need a motherboard this beefy. I'm just dumb and like shiny objects. So you don't have to be adjacent. Next up, I have 32 gigs of 3200 RGB DDR4 Trident Z RAM from G-Skill. Then I got a Samsung 500 gigabyte M.2 NVMe 970 Pro SSD that was used not only to run Windows 10 version 1903 for testing, but also hold the media files, metadata, and transcoding directory. And powering everything, I have my old 1000 watt EVGA power supply, which did not fail on me, even though I took it out of my old one because it was failing, but I think it was some other issues non-related. And for my testing, I actually created three brand new media files featuring some geese that I might have called ducks in the past that I can not only be more specific about, but also share these files with you via a torrent file. You can find links to that file in the description down below. It's probably going to be a little slow initially, but you know, give it some time. I only got so much upload speed. This torrent will include three media files. That's gonna be two 1080p files and one 4K file. The 4K is 40 megabits per second, 10-bit HEVC 5.1 surround sound. One 1080p is HEVC 15 megabits per second with 5.1. And the other 1080p is H.264 15 megabits per second with 5.1. I created these files in order to reproduce some of the more common files used on people's media servers today. I'm sure they're not gonna be perfect. Some people have some comments about them, but I am gonna be using them as a standard moving forward for any transcoding related tests and future videos. So if you ever have the desire to test your system against my results, now's your chance. So with all that said, let's dive into the testing. What you're gonna see are actually three different numbers for each testing round, and that's because the P2000, for me, performed exactly the same with the 3700 and the 3900X. Even though I spent all that time testing to see if it wouldn't, I was kinda hoping it would perform differently. I don't know why. So starting out with the most demanding media file, the 4K 10-bit file being transcoded down to four megabits per second, the 3700X was able to software transcode or CPU transcode only three streams at the same time. The 3900X was able to add one more stream while the P2000 was able to dominate both of them with a total of eight concurrent streams. Moving on to the 1080p HEVC file, the 3700X was able to software transcode down to three megabits per second, 13 streams. The 3900X was able to do 17 streams, and the P2000 won again by banging out a whopping 26 concurrent transcodes. 
Then we have what could be considered the most relatable video file, the 1080p 15 megabits per second H.264 file. With this, the 3700X was able to crank out a mind-blowing 24 concurrent software transcodes down to 3 megabits per second. And because it's a beastly bigger brother, the 3900X destroyed that number by achieving 33 total transcodes at the same time, while the P2000 was only able to do 28. Which actually brings me back to my original question. Is the P2000 worth it if you're going to be putting it into a high-end Plex Media server like something built with a 3700 or a 3900X CPU? I mean, after all, how many streams do you really need? And that all depends on your media files. If you primarily have 1080p content in the H.264 codec, spending the extra $200 on a 3900X, getting a super cheap video card just to have something can actually give you better transcoding performance on your Plex Media server. If you're jumping more into HEVC files, both the 3700 and the 3900 can handle a lot, but the P2000 is a great option because it offers nine more streams than the 3900X and it doubles the output of the 3700X. But it will cost you anywhere between $350 to $450 extra depending on when and where you buy it. 4K, however, is where the value really gets brought home with the P2000. I'm not saying that I support the practice of transcoding 4K content. I truly believe that a 4K either is direct stream or not streamed at all. In my opinion, it's a waste of resources and most of the time you're not gonna get the results that you want. But if you absolutely have to, the P2000 can really add some performance to your Plex media server. But there are a couple things that I wanna note here about my testing experience. The first one being that with hardware acceleration turned on, you cannot fall back onto your CPU if you hit the limit of your GPU unless your GPU is hard locked. What that means is things like your consumer grade NVIDIA graphics card like a 2080 Ti or a 1080 Ti has a two stream hard limit. So if you add that to your Plex Media Server without hacking or unlocking the driver, then you're only gonna be limited to two additional hardware accelerated transcoded streams and the rest is going to rely on your processor. Unfortunately, if you do hit your 28 stream maximum with your P2000 and your processor's just chilling at like 30%, it won't roll over. So you either have to pick the P2000 or pick the CPU unless you have a hard limit which if you have a hard limit, it just really sucks. And number two, for me, GPU transcoding testing was one of the more difficult things to achieve. Keep in mind, I'm like getting into like 20, 28 streams. So I have tablets and everything spread out everywhere in my computer room. And I got to a point where on my tablets, it would say that it was transcoding on my tablet down to three megabits per second, but the Plex Media server was actually feeding it a direct stream. In order to get this to work sometimes with some clients, and it didn't matter if it was Android or the Plex Media player, I would have to switch it back from three megabits to two, back to three, just to get the transcoding to work. I don't know if this would happen to everybody, but in my experience with hardware acceleration, I ran into those issues and I've never had issues with CPU transcoding playing a direct stream while the pad itself actually says it's transcoding. So I've never had that with the CPU, but I definitely ran into it a couple times with GPU. And another thing to consider here is the difference between a dedicated Plex Media server and a server that has a Plex Media server on it. If you have a dedicated Plex media server where that's all it does then skipping out on the gpu and just getting a higher end cpu could be a very valid option for you if however you want to use your server for something else like virtual machines or other tasks related then you want to have that extra cpu resources available and if you have a dedicated graphics card handling all the transcoding done on your plex media server freeing up your cpu to allow it to do your other task that means you're going to get a lot more bang for your buck out of your server which ultimately adds a lot of value to the p2000 especially if you want to throw it in an older server like I demonstrated in my previous video. So I guess it all comes down to your needs, your media files, and you know, how much gasoline you're willing to pour on your credit card. Well guys, if you wanna see more videos related to the Ryzen processors and the other hardware that I bought for this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Of course, if you have any questions, comments, or complaints, post them in the comments down below. Thank you to Dot Tech Domains for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching and have yourself a great day.